India, one of the oldest cultures in the world and home to an increasing population, 1.3 billion people. This is the city of Vishakhapatnam. While considered a medium-sized city, about 2 million Vishakhapatnam is an industrial center of the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh on the Bay of Bengal. Similar to most places in India, Vishakhapatnam is a vibrant city with a variety of religions, colors and smells. Some of the most feared animals in the world, venomous snakes, are also a part of this environment. As a result, encounters with humans are quite common. Just behind the suburbs of Vishakhapatnam are beautiful lush and green mountains. These are the Eastern Ghats, a discontinuous range of mountains which stretch along India's eastern coast and they are more than a thousand kilometers long. This vast landscape harbors an assortment of ecosystems and an incredible diversity of wildlife. The Eastern Ghats are one of the less studied natural areas in India, but they are the perfect habitat for snakes. However, Vishakhapatnam is a growing city which has spread into the Eastern Ghats. Wildlife depend on these natural areas and conflict with snakes is becoming increasingly common. To reduce this conflict, there is a man who has dedicated almost all of his time to the protection of snakes in Vishakhapatnam. His volunteer is now learning to safely remove snakes from a house. In this case, it is a non-venomous rat snake, so it is good practice. Soon, he may be working with far more dangerous species of snakes. Yes. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. I can do this with the It is very important to educate people and explain to them the importance of snakes and what role they play in the environment. The volunteer shows the owners of the house different species of snakes and explains which of them are venomous and potentially deadly. Mm -hmm. 
After the rescue, it is time to release the snake behind the city into its natural habitat. Ever since I was a kid, like 10 years old, I've been handling snakes. I've always been fascinated by their slithering nature. They look, you know, they're animals, they don't have legs, they don't have ears, yet they are an evolutionary success story. Uh, my uncle used to give a lot of snake shows, like an education programs uh, at the local zoo where I would go and help him as a volunteer. And that's how I actually learned handling snakes. Um, and then I also developed this passion for these animals and I've always been interested in snakes and just wanted to conserve them. I've been watching people killing snakes unnecessarily, like just on site. And uh, although I've rescued snakes, I realized that there's actually, the problem is bigger than just rescuing snakes. People are killing snakes because the main factor is lack of knowledge. And so the awareness is low, uh, absolutely nothing. And lack of trained personnel who can safely rescue snakes. So these two major factors are contributing for a raise in human snake conflict across this region of Eastern Ghat. So that's the point I thought, yeah, let's do something about it. Let's train people, let's, let's educate them and try to mitigate this conflict and save some snakes. In India, there are many myths and superstitions connected with snakes. For example, people believe that vine snakes have poisonous breath. In fact, these snakes are just opening their mouth as they try to scare potential predators, which acts as a defense mechanism. They have rear fangs and their venom is not dangerous for humans at all. Murti works to educate his community, which can help ease people's fear about snakes. He was invited to a grain mill, where workers often see snakes. During the meeting, every person receives detailed information about what to do after anyone is bitten by a snake and they also learn about different snake species which can occur in their area. Distinguishing between harmless and potentially deadly venomous snake is essential. Probably the most famous venomous snake of India is the spectacled cobra. Worshipped by some, but greatly feared by others, this snake has an important place in Indian culture. When the cobra feels threatened, it spreads its ribs and forms a hood. The intention is to look bigger and avoid being attacked. Spectacled cobras are very common in India and therefore encounters with people are inevitable. In fact, cobras and other snakes are lured to the villages and cities. The reason is very simple. They find plenty of food there.
When humans are messy, it attracts rats, which bring cobras, favorite prey item. Snakes, being predators, are an excellent form of pest control and keep prey populations in balance. The snake has no intention to threaten humans, but to find food, they will enter people's homes. Most often, snakes hunt at night. A two meter long spectacle cobra was found almost directly on the street in the center of Bishakapatnam. People called Murthy, and he arrived with his volunteers as soon as possible. There are about a hundred people here, so the situation is potentially very dangerous. Cobra needs to be removed quickly to avoid any incidents. People on the street are so happy that the situation was solved and they don't need to go to sleep in fear. The volunteers are a key factor for the effective work in the city because one snake rescuer cannot cope with the high number of snake rescue calls. Snakes with knowledge and uh, like me kuni social network media uh, like some books. But live choose EZWS lo join in the live snakes demo so rescues allowed handling allowed Snakes and the main conflict is out in the sla. The under animals, well, tiger, well, the padwal, elephant, well, out in the gunner, Adanal Kodi out in and snakes, well, and the Chalaman Chanbotanaru, but other good managers in the pale habitat local disturbance side. Tigers kill around 90 people per year in India and there is no available data for leopards. More conflicts happen with elephants, which need a lot of space. These giant herbivores account for around 500 deaths per year. Conflicts with elephants are more common because as elephants need vast areas to search for food, they often travel into plantations and destroy crops. Encounters with big animals are often in the media, but in fact they represent a minor problem for the whole country. Human-snake conflict is much more complicated. Each year, over 
50,000 people die from snake bite in India, which accounts for almost half of worldwide snake bite deaths. The countryside in India is full of plantations and fields, and this environment is a perfect habitat for a snake which is responsible for most snake bites per year in the world. The Russell's Viper is very common and possesses cytotoxic and hemotoxic venom, which causes lifelong damage, even for people who survive the bite. The reason why this snake comes close to human settlements is very simple. High concentration of rodents. Russell's Viper is a master of camouflage, and people can step on it when they work outside and don't have proper shoes. One of the supporters of the Eastern Ghats Wildlife Society is Save the Snakes, a non-profit organization dedicated to snake conservation based in the United States. The director and some members of the board arrived to India to observe the impact of Murthy's work with their own eyes. Save the Snakes was founded by myself and Murthy Katamahanti from India. And the two of us met actually in 2015 when we were both accepted into a leadership program for wildlife conservation called the Emerging Wildlife Conservation Leadership Program. Now this program completely changed both of our lives because it connected us to conservationists from around the world working on many different conservation issues. Uh, one thing that Murthy and I uh, had in common is that we were both totally obsessed with snakes. We love these animals so much. And at the time of the program, we weren't working with snakes. We were working on different conservation issues um, with other species of wildlife. However, when the two of us got together, we immediately bonded over snakes. In 2017, Save the Snakes was founded to protect threatened snake populations and mitigate human snake conflict. And there is such a balance between those two things because we cannot save snakes unless we have people on the ground that live with those snakes to even begin to appreciate them, to even welcome them in their space, right? So Save the Snakes is a community-based conservation organization where we work with communities on uh, the ground, truly at a grassroots level with education programs, community outreach, and truly in capacity building of local conservationists to mitigate human snake conflict situations. So by supporting individuals to go to these communities and rescue snakes and relocate them to a nearby suitable habitat, we can actually not only save the snakes alive, but by going to those communities, educating the, the, the members in that surrounding area about why snakes are important, why we shouldn't kill snakes because it increases the risk of getting bitten or, um, or even just creates more conflict and more hatred of snakes, we can actually work together to conserve these animals. The Save the Snakes team received a unique opportunity to visit schools where Murthy has already given talks to see how students are starting to think differently about snakes. So scientific illustration is when you draw something that has um, accuracy. And so I can tell every single species because they're drawn accurately. And that way, the depiction of this particular species of snake. 
It is important to educate the younger generations because they will continue to respect snakes around them also in the future. Murti has already educated thousands of people about snakes. One of Murti's volunteers is a former student of this school, and moreover, a woman who can inspire girls to overcome the fear of snakes. I have been uh, working with Murti sir towards the conservation of uh, small cats and also to mitigate the man and snake uh, conflicts uh, through the Eastern Ghats. A lot of work has been done in the Western Ghats, but not much initiatives have been taken in the conservation fields in Eastern Ghats. So um, I'm looking forward that uh, at least some of you guys would be interested in carrying this work forward in future. And best of luck for your future. Thank you. Boys are like, uh, okay, let's uh, play with the snake. Or they're, they're just uh, more courageous, I feel. But uh, when it comes to girls, they're a little bit timid. And because of the circumstances around them, and uh, they just feel like uh, they get scared of uh, everything. And <laughs> so snakes are one of them. And uh, they don't really, uh, they are the best in leaving the snake alone, actually. The, no, nobody actually knows that these are non-venomous and venomous. So they're like, let it, let's not go near that. That's the perception of uh, most of the girls that I've met when I'm talking about these snakes, even when I'm showing a video that I'm, I've done this, or if I'm showing a photo with a snake, they'll be like, no, 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 no don't show me, don't show me, they'll, they'll get scared of it. So it is uh, really hard to change that perception. And, uh, but these days, some of the, as I told, some are getting interested in it. And I think a lot of people will really, um, by seeing people like us, more girls like us, maybe they'll get more interested in working with snakes and if you do some research on it. The King Cobra, the world's longest venomous snake, can be found in the Eastern Ghats. The habitat is located very close to the villages and small cities. Rural communities in the Eastern Ghats of India are primarily poor and lack access to appropriate medical care when a snake bite occurs. The current solution for mitigating the snake bite crisis is to indiscriminately kill snakes, including king cobras, which has contributed to the species' decline. Currently, king cobras are listed as threatened in India. The team visits some of these areas to see the life of local people and explore the habitats where king cobras are being found. It was the King Cobra which inspired Murthy to take bigger actions in snake protection. His project is just at the beginning, and much work will need to be done in the future. I learned about King Cobras in the Eastern Ghats. I've always been fascinated, you know, it's like a 
pleasant surprise of my god king cobras and the eastern ghats then i came across some local press clippings where i had seen these killings indiscriminate killings of king cobras by locals uh, which is like shocking to me like how can they kill such a huge snake it's um, well and then i visited these places interviewed them then i came to know that fear and ignorance are the only main reasons for killing them it's not that the king cobra beat anyone or it's a serious uh, man animal conflict going on it's just because of the fear <laughs> On the other side of the Indian subcontinent, in the state of Karnataka, there is a project focus on king cobra conservation, which is successfully ongoing for already more than 10 years. The Agumbe Rainforest Research Station is located in the Western Ghats, a mountain range which is a hotspot of biodiversity. It is a permanent field station of the Centre for Herpetology, Madras Crocodile Bank Trust in Chennai. This place is a heaven for reptiles. During the day, flying lizards move through the forest canopy as they glide from tree to tree. The forests around the field station are particularly rich in snakes, and most are active during the night. Some of them live only in western Ghats. One of the most common venomous snakes in the area is the Malabar Pit Viper. These small, arboreal vipers are very variable in color. Another abundant snake species here is the common crate. Together with the spectacle cobras and the Russell's vipers, crates are responsible for most of the venomous snake bites in India. For crates, most snake bites happen when people are sleeping on the ground. Snakes sometimes enter homes looking for food and as the snake passes by the sleeping person, the person might roll over and accidentally touch the snake. In defense, snake bites and crates have extremely potent neurotoxic venom. The victims often die in their sleep. Crates are shy and secretive animals, which rather tend to hide their head than bite. <laughs> the most famous snake of Western Ghats, the King Cobra, can also be found during the night. It is so common here that it often comes to houses where it hunts other snakes. This area is a domain of Ajay Giri, a snake specialist who has worked with king cobras for more than a decade. He reacts to movement just tasty. He works very gently and professionally. His rescues are being shown as an example to other snake rescuers around the world. Okay. 
ಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಬಿಡ್ರಿ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಬಿಡ್ರ ಇಲ್ಲ ನೋಡಿದ್ರಿ The big king cobra is quickly and safely put in the bag and then it is time to gather some scientific data from it. Every snake which is being rescued is being weighed and it will get a numbered pit tag and planted under the skin. This will allow Ajay and the team to recognize it easily if they need to relocate it again. After the procedure, the snake is again placed in the bag and will be released in the close vicinity, so it is not away from its home range. The release is done without touching the snake. Ajay has done this over 600 times and is a true professional. The incredible work of people in a Gombe rainforest research station is the best example of successful snake conservation efforts in India. And when I was a kid, uh, most of the, my friends they used to go to play cricket, and I used to go near a pond and stream and look look for fishes and at the same time i used to see uh, snakes which fascinated me a lot and rather than touching them i would like to just see them once somebody called somebody uh, found a snake inside their house and they were very panicked i knew that was a non-venomous rat snake so i went there and i was trying to tell them please uh, don't be panicked because it's a non-venomous snake uh, nothing will happen but unfortunately uh, I was so small and they killed the snake I felt so sad I thought I knew everything but I couldn't convince them there was one situation where I rescued a snake a snake and then uh, people realized that this is the person who can solve the situation at, at least he know how better way how to solve the situation I was almost uh, 
known in surrounding area so, and i had then i like even i had my own mobile so people knew my number they passed my number to one to another and they were they used to call me so i i built that interest slowly and then uh, somehow i got to know about uh, renowned herpetologist romulus whitaker and jerry martin uh, and and that was a really great day for me when i met both of them together so they suggested me to go to agumbe and forest research station uh, situated situated in karnataka and then i came here and there was a king cobra telemetry project was uh, going on and and i they offered me a job as a research associate in that project where i had to track wild king cobra so currently i am working in ars as a field director and uh, i am since a decade i am working on human snake conflict mitigation especially human king cobra conflict mitigation where i am focusing on king cobra biology since 10 year we have i have been rescued more than 600 king cobra around here and when there is a snake many people come they gather they just want to look the snake take a photograph and and that that is common no problem no issue but our first priority to control crowd then remove stuff from if there is a situation where we have to handle the snake we remove surrounding of the snake like whatever gunny sacks firewood we have to remove from the place and make a comfortable place for for the person who is handling the snake we follow all safety protocols we carry always uh, a proper uh, snake rescue kit It includes snake uh, hook pipes and many bags different size of bags different size of pipes uh, depending on the size of the snake we use those pipe and bags we try to uh, finish this rescue work within a 10 30 second or max 1 minute but when there uh, when there are many crowd come there many people come there we like to share our knowledge with them King cobras are able to move a few kilometers per day when they are on the hunt and will even cross rivers to find their food. Ajay works in the radius of 80 kilometers from the station. and some days he will rescue three or even more snakes today is a big day for another king cobra this male called M5 is going to be released after having surgery for a new transmitter has been implanted inside its body This king cobra is the beginning of a new long-term telemetry project which will help Ajay to understand the life of this incredible snake even better. M5 is currently around 4 meters long and can grow up to 5.5 meters. Because of the educational efforts of Ajay and the rest of the ARRS team, local community members incredibly tolerate such a huge snake living close to them. These days, we have seen that many people around this area, like almost 100 km kilometer radius from the Agumbe Rainforest Station, people are listening us and they are impl- uh, uh, implementing these points and they are like uh, like. clearing around their area they are using torch when they walk at night so i'm like i'm very happy like ars is very happy that slowly people are changing through research and all awareness program around here what whatever we are learning we are we have an experience uh, we would like to share with other professional snake rescuer from all over india so either we will call them here for a workshop to share our knowledge and 
pro- even share their knowledge with us or we will go to their places and uh, yeah would would like to do the same thing uh, share share the information there are volunteers who track m5 every day and monitor his movement and behavior After the surgery, he is hungry and begins to move a lot. King cobras feed almost exclusively on other snakes. He is foraging around the villages and in the rice fields. There are plenty of rodents in those places which attract other snakes. Ajay is hoping that M5 is in good condition after the surgery and will be able to find food. It is obvious that he knows his territory well as he visits the places where he was observed before. Three days after the release, he finds and eats an adult Malabar pit viper, which is a good starter for him. but he needs to find bigger prey soon. At the end of the fifth day, after the release, just before darkness, M5 attacks and eats a two meters long spectacled cobra. Everything happens just behind the house of villagers. This is the sign of victory for Ajay. M5 is in good health, and he will be providing crucial data about the lives of its species. As Ajay's team learns more about these snakes, they will be able to be more effective at protecting them. The goal for the future is to implant the transmitters into more individuals to continue the research at a Gumbe Rainforest Research Station.
Snakes play a vital role in the ecosystems, but their importance is still being underestimated around the world. In India, the lives of people and snakes are closely connected together. Thanks to people like Ajay Giri and Murthy Kanti Mahanti, human-snake conflict seems to have a chance to be solved. Hopefully their efforts will inspire many people to respect snakes and find a balance where humans and snakes can live together in harmony. As human populations expand into places where snakes live, uh, we're seeing an increased amount of human-snake conflict. And so in order to reduce snake bite around the world, but also at the same time conserve threatened snake populations, we need your help. And so together, we can save snakes. And so it's because of the generosity of people like you that care about reducing snake bite around the world and protecting these critically uh, endangered and threatened species of snakes please support our work and visit us at savethesnakes.org.